Hey traders, this is Christian Farmhertz with Tribeca Trade Group with your end of day recap for Thursday as well as option review for the day. And uh, the chart that I have up here is kind of indicative of what we saw today and kind of the good and the bad market. We've got a couple different things going on. Uh, so this is uh, this is implied correlations with the S&P. This is a chart that I've been talking about for a while now, but implied correlations moved up a little bit today, but still to your low and I'm going to go through the market and kind of explain exactly what I mean but basically what this means is is the stocks inside the S&P are not moving together so for example, um, S&P spies actually finished up on the day uh, seven basis points. Uh, we you can see we actually have a red uh, red bar today uh, because we finished a little bit lower than the open. But um, all in all, up seven basis points today. Not a big move down in the whole index as well as uh, as well as the Dow. You know, I don't really look at the Dow all that much. But just to kind of look at, you know, the indices and where they finished for the day, uh, up 18 basis points today. So when you look at your sectors for the day, and we'll just kind of show the movers of the day inside the Dow. And you, this kind of paints a picture that I want to that I want to talk about today. And you can see Johnson Johnson up 1.8%. Uh, this was a deal that this was a name that we were all over today in the Tribeca Trade Group room trading room today. There was some news out that uh, they are possibly looking at a medical device company. Uh, that was in the in the beginning of the day. So really a huge move up. Um, a couple traders played this today in in options and had a huge winner in J and J. J and J the options are very very cheap. So if you happen to catch a big move or this move this name uh, tends if it bounces on a nice move or a nice rumor story what have you um, you're going to do very well in options you can see it actually sold off a little bit uh, after the close but huge day for Johnson and Johnson today considering those cheap options uh, much different than trading US Steel or, or AKS or, or some of the tech names um, very 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 cheap options so just kind of rounding this out Pfizer was up 1.4 percent Verizon was up 1.3 percent UNH was up 1.3 percent Mer Merck was up. Um, so what's the theme of these names? You actually throw in a couple other names in here. And um, a lot of it is is more defense, slower moving, um, lower volatility names that really led today. You go to to the decliners today. Um, you had actually Nike, which which finished down on the day. A lot of retail really got smoked towards the end of the day on this border tax story. But Caterpillar was down 2.7 percent. Um, GE was down 1 percent. Uh, Disney actually fin uh, excuse me, Apple actually fin finished down on the day, but. Um, what I wanted to illustrate is some areas of the market really got hammered today. You look at the steel names today. Um, this is the SLX ETF, or you could look at U.S. Steel. Uh, but there is an ETF out there for the steel names. It's SLX, but U.S. Steel was down over 7%. At one point, uh, almost down 10%. AK Steel, this whole group, um, that and the XME, the Metals and Mining ETF, um, down uh, 4% for the day. And then you kind of go through the, some of the other riskier type securities or risk on type sec uh, sectors, I should say. You have semis, which was basically all N NVDA, double downgrade today. Um, really kind of, uh, this was a pain for me. Um, I do own NVIDIA. This, this was a... Uh, I actually took a decent loss on this one today. Um, so this name down uh, 9% at one point, I think down also down 10%. So the whole semis group was down 1%. Retail got smoked at the end of the day with um, this border tax. Uh, so a lot of political uh, commentary today that kind of drove the market in different directions. But retail was down 2.3%. Biotech was down 1%, uh, consumer discretionary down 70 basis points. So you look at some of these sectors and you would have said, hey, the S&P must have been down at least a half a percent today, but that's not the case. And, uh, you know, why I'm kind of hammering this point down is um, there are certain areas that are continuing to kind of do their own thing. And we're seeing again, once again, 
appears to be a mini sector rotation. Um, look at the utilities, very, very strong. You look at consumer, consumer staples. This is something that we outlined in the Tribeca Trade Group newsletter. By the way, if you're not a subscriber, get involved because um, we this was a sector that I thought was had the most momentum going into the beginning of the week. And look at what this thing has done this week. Um, and I talked about this 5550 price target. We're almost there. We're just about there. We, we actually just hit, about hit this purple line. Um, today, which which is a VPOC, but I think XLP consumer consumer staples uh, has been the best performing sector of the week, and this was the the exact um, uh, profile uh, uh, sector that I that I profiled in uh, in the weekly newsletter. So um, if you're not involved, uh, if you're not a subscriber, um, you get a ton of things with your membership. But check us out, Tribeca Trade Group. Um, you could you could check us out for a month for a half for half off $68 and you could see what we're all about. The value of the newsletter is worth twice that. I'm not even talking about the live trading room and, and so on and so forth and the pre-market commentary that we do. But um, that's what's going on right now. The, the other names that performed well, uh, I talked about utilities, uh, talked about um, consumer staples. What are the biggest uh, divergences? Look at the healthcare ETF, XLV up 70 basis points today. And then look at biotech, equally weighted biotech down 1% on the day. That's 1.7% difference. And there is a lot of crossover between these two ETFs. There's there's a lot of names in common, but really odd to see um, basically about a 1.7% 1. 1 difference between biotech and healthcare, one outperforming and one underperforming on the day. Very, very odd. But, uh, you know, if you break down that XLV, um, ETF, it's it's the names that we talked about in the beginning, uh, J and J, Pfizer, and Merck that uh, that did really well today. Bristol Myers as well. Um, REITs also moving up here. Take a look at this. Um, now above the 200-day moving average, not huge performance today, but that white line is the 200-day moving average, so poking its head above the 200-day. First time we've seen that all year long, actually since all the way since. Um, since October, uh, since REITs have been over the 200-day moving average. Um, solar names actually bounced back pretty nice today. You can look at the TAN ETF, still underneath the 200-day moving average, but you got a couple names that are that are above. I think CSIQ is above the 200-day moving average. Um, so bounce back a little bit after, what, Wednesday's uh, weekday in, in the solar group. So uh, I would say definitely keep an eye on a couple of these names in here. Again, the TAN, the whole ETF is not over the 200-day moving average, but moving that way. Um, GDX and GDXJ, they actually sold off a little bit. Uh, gold seemed to maintain its bid. Uh, just want to look at GDXJ, still above the 200-day moving average, but not by much. Um, was basically the high of the day uh, was around the open, and then we sold off a little bit. So keep an eye on uh, on uh, GDXJ, uh, 200-day moving average. But yeah, you know, my screen is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty split between outperforming sectors and underperforming sectors. So real big divergence uh, between groups and uh, and sectors today. Um, finally, I just want to talk about the queues, and then we'll talk a little bit about option activity. Uh, the queues kind of showed their first crack in the day, but really not too much damage done. They started to explore a little bit lower levels. Uh, we talked about the level where we where we could bounce from today, the support. Again, we call these levels out, um, in, you know, exactly as they're happening in the live trading room. But I said today that the queues could get to 129.41. They almost got there, but that was the support for the day, and it held pretty nicely. Um, so that'll be the area to watch again tomorrow is 129.41. We're well above there. We're up, we're 50 cents above there. But just in case we get a little weakness tomorrow, which I wouldn't be surprised, we'll watch the overnight markets um, and see how they kind of digest some of the moves. But um, just looking at the the option activity, you got J and J on here. Uh, just sticking with this, the theme of consumer staples, CL nice performer again today. Um, you look at STZ Constellation. Uh, Dollar Tree calls in that name as well. So that's pretty much the theme of the day. There were some other trades that happened. Um, There's a big Oracle trade out in, uh, in June. Oracle um, has just had really nice performance. If you haven't seen this chart in a while. Uh, so I'm not really a fan of buying the, the options up here. If you look at the daily chart, Oracle's already made this huge move. You know, And it does have some more to go to get to the all-time high, but I'm not really a fan of buying it. Um, 
at this heightened level. So I, I did not take that trade today. Um, what else? There's a couple other interesting or notable trades that hit. Uh, there was some, there's a big LB dip buyer. Um, another name that got smoked today, L Brands. Uh, they were down, I think, about 10%. So there was a dip buyer in that name. Um, Caterpillar, some big put buying going on, uh, you know, on a, on a play on the infrastructure plan, possibly not being rolled out as soon as expected. Um, and then we saw some some cues and we saw a long dated XLF trade. Also, Microsoft, a lot of calls traded in April. You know, Microsoft is one of those names that, you know, had good earnings, but really hasn't gotten, go you know, ha didn't didn't get going um, and it hasn't gone back to where it was for earnings. So a lot of calls traded out in uh, in April and May. I will have to check the open interest tomorrow because a lot of those names that saw the um, the option activity had decent open interest. So that'll be something that I'll come back to tomorrow. Same thing with this April 70 calls um, that won a big open interest um, on that strike as well. So that'll be something that I'll touch upon uh, in tomorrow pre-market. Uh, but that's it for today's video. Uh, have a great night and uh, enjoy your Thursday night. See you back Friday morning. Thank you.